Hey Art Nerds! Today we're going to talk about how your choice of paper affects how your alcohol markers perform. This is a really cool topic, so I hope you guys will stay tuned. So I am prepping to teach alcohol marker classes through my Nashville Plaza. If you're in the Nashville area and you'd like to learn alcohol markers from me, you ought to go sign up. I'll have a link down below in the description below. We have at least six classes and we're in talks for more. But today, what we're going to be focusing on is how your choice of paper affects how your alcohol markers handle, specifically how your Copic markers handle. So in preparation for my class, I have examples on several, several different types of paper and through this week, it's going to be longer for you guys, but through this week I'm going to uh, work on coloring each one of these examples so I have kind of a, a better understanding of how different papers accept markers in different ways. Over the years, I primarily use thirsty papers for my marker art. So I use a lot of sketchbook paper. I use Strathmore, um, their mixed media paper. I've used illustration board. I use uh, fluid, easy block, cellulose, watercolor paper. And I have examples of all of that for you guys um, here. I also have done marker tests on a wide variety of papers, but today, I want to keep it kind of simple. I want to keep it kind of easy. We are going to test our markers out on three different types of paper. We have here a coated cardstock. This is Copic Express It Blend It paper. This is what is usually recommended for marker artists. I am not the biggest fan of it, but that doesn't mean it's not great. It just means it doesn't suit my marker needs. We have a very thirsty watercolor paper here. This is Fabriano Studio. So it is a, actually, you know what? Let's not use Fabriano Studio. I'm gonna flip the script. We're gonna try something different. And I'm gonna grab a block of Fluid Easy Block because A, I am familiar with using Fluid Easy Block. Actually, let's, let's get this one. Woo, see this? The joy and the wonder of having someone with ADHD in charge of your stream is uh, we flip the script, but I'm familiar with this paper and I know this is a cellulose based watercolor paper, which means it uses wood pulp. Whereas this is actually a mixed rag, but we're still gonna use this because I'm really curious to see how a 25% cotton, 75% cellulose watercolor paper works with alcohol markers. And then we have vellum, like, like artist vellum. So it is very, very thin, like tracing paper. And I have used tracing paper and vellum with alcohol markers in the past and I really liked it. So I wanna kinda show you guys the gamut today. So we have a paper design for marker use. We have very thirsty papers. And then we have a very thin paper that cannot take a lot of layers. So this should be fun. So over to our left, we have a gamut of colors. And I wanna do blending and layering demonstrations for you guys. So we have G20 Wax White, G43 Pistachio. We have a custom Copic that has been filled with Ranger in Actually, I'm gonna switch this one a little bit down, but it's Ranger in the color bottle. So that is another alcohol ink. And if you're interested in learning how you can use your existing alcohol inks like Pinata or Ranger in your Copic markers, I have you covered here on this channel. We have G16 Malachite and then we have BG78 Bronze. So one of the first things I wanna do is I wanna do swatches on each of these papers. And then we're gonna compare how those swatches look. We're going to go ahead and begin with the Copic Express It is it express it? Yeah, it is express it blending card. All right, next we're going to do swatches on the fluid easy block cellulose watercolor paper. I'm going to do the Fabriano Studio 25% cotton, 75% cellulose watercolor paper. And 
finally, we're going to do the artist vellum. I'll go ahead and move this out just in case it bleeds. Okay, so we have our swatches on all four papers. I want you guys to start noticing, looking for differences other than the paper color. For example, the watercolor papers are a little bit warmer than the marker and the vellum paper. So one of the things I've noticed is that the watercolor papers, at the speed we were going, the colors are a little bit more saturated than they are on the Express It blending card and on the vellum. So the thing about that is these are uncoated papers and these are either coated papers or have a surface to them. So the colors are going to sit more on the surface for these kind of papers than for these kind of papers. These sort of papers are really gonna draw the colors into the paper because they're not as tightly woven. So the bad part or the downside to using things like thirsty papers, watercolor papers, is that they are thirsty. They are going to drain your markers and many marker artists tell you don't do that. I happen to like it because I can get more blends out of these kind of papers than I can get on these. So we have a little bit more color saturation going on than we do on these papers. Let's go ahead and do a gradiated blend through all six colors. And we're going to start with the Express It blending card and kind of work our way through all the papers. Okay, art nerds, what differences did you notice? Not only in how the markers were handled by me, but also how the papers accepted the markers. I found that on these three papers, it was a little bit difficult to get started. You guys may have seen me struggle to draw the circular shape. And I found that the paper was kind of thirsty 
and it kind of provided a bit of resistance when I was trying to draw and trying to fill areas in. But as I added subsequent layers, that got a lot easier. The thirstiest paper felt like the fluid easy block cellulose paper. And I didn't, I wasn't able to get as nice of transitions or blends as I would normally like. I was surprised by how well the Fabriano handles alcohol marker. It seems to have a lot more color depth than the Fluid Easy Block, which is, I don't know, I did not expect that. I figured it was going to be a struggle and I figured it was going to bleed a lot because I thought the cotton fibers would cause the alcohol dye based inks to kind of expand into other fibers as they dried. So I learned something new. As for the, um, sorry, the Express It blending card, it actually has a slightly tacky feeling to the surface. And that's something I've noticed that when you do too many layers of alcohol marker, it starts to get this tacky sort of feeling to the surface. And then finally, we have the vellum. It never really seemed to seep through all the way. As you can see with some of these other examples, they start to seep as you saturate the paper and you do additional layers. It all seemed to stay on the surface, which meant I could do a lot of blending, but it also means that you can only do so many layers. And I wanna quickly show you guys something. So we're gonna take a really dark color. Now we're gonna take a really light color and it's going to pull the marker color in rather than just pulling it black back. Woo. So instead of just pushing the marker to the back of the page, it actually pulls some of that color through. So if you're looking for sort of blending effects similar to what you could get with say watercolor, a coated paper or even a paper with a very tight weave like this vellum might be a good choice for you. And you can do many of these techniques on tracing paper as well or even craft vellum from say Michaels. So I feel like all of the papers that we kind of demonstrated today have their own unique individual uses. If you want a lot of blendability and you're not going to do a lot of layers and you enjoy this translucency, which can be really beautiful, it can give it kind of a stained glass effect, vellum can be a great paper option for you. It's going to consume less ink because your ink stays on the surface. So if you're a card maker and maybe you wanted to do an inset with an alcohol marker piece in the center and you wanted that translucency, vellum could be a really good selection for you. If you're looking for a good general purpose all-rounder, alcohol marker paper, particularly Copic Express It blending paper, could be a wonderful choice for you. I do find that after a certain number of layers though, it starts to fight me a bit. And that's not necessarily evident in this video, but if you go check out my skin tone video, you'll see what I'm talking about. I like to work on thirstier papers. Those are not a good option for every artist. I like to do a lot of layers. I like to do a lot of blending. And I find that watercolor papers, mixed media papers, and Bristol tend to work really well for those purposes. Now, I usually enjoy using Fluid Easy Block when I do my succulent and botanical studies. And you can check out a few of those here on this channel because I can also watercolor on top of it, which is a technique you guys should definitely check out. It is a great way to expand sort of a limited alcohol marker selection. And I haven't had a chance to really play with the Fabriano as a marker paper or as a paper for marker use. So I'm excited to play with this and discover more about it in the near future. But my number one takeaway is every marker artist, every alcohol marker artist is going to have different needs. There's going to be different things they want to accomplish. Maybe you have a small collection and you need to get the most out of every color. Maybe you have a large collection and you want to be able to do a lot of blending. Every paper is going to handle differently. So I really encourage you guys to get out there and find the papers that work for you. Find your favorite papers. Maybe you like using sketchbook paper. I like using sketchbook paper. And I have examples here on this channel of me doing just that. I also have other paper reviews and I will have more paper reviews for alcohol markers coming in the near future. So if you'd like to watch someone else do it before you make a purchase commitment, that is totally fine. Keep an eye on this channel. 
So I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and helping me test a few different marker papers. I hope this was useful, helpful, and informative for you guys, and I hope it helps you feel a little bit more confident in your marker use. Anytime I talk about using art supplies, be it watercolors, comic supplies, or markers, it's all about finding things that work for you in the order of operations that you like making art. I feel like there isn't really a wrong way to do it so long as you're satisfied with your end result. So I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I hope this was useful. I hope to see you guys again really soon. This video was made available to my wonderful patrons on Patreon before you guys even saw it. So if you like early access stuff, if you want it as quick as possible and you want to support what I do, head on over to patreon.com slash natosoup and join my art nerd community. It is only through their help that I am able to continue to release videos such as this one and I owe them a really deep debt of gratitude. So thank you so much art nerds for all of your support over the years. If you like alcohol marker tutorials and you want to see more of them, make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification so you never miss an update. I will see you guys again really soon with another marker tutorial. Bye guys!